Alright guys, how's it going? So some of you may be aware that Blender 2.91 has now moved into beta and 2.92 is now alpha. And I think this would be a good time just to look at some of the new features. Now I'm not going to cover every single feature, there's quite a lot to be honest, but I'll cover the ones that kind of make me smile and improve your workflow. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to select the object and I'm going to add this to a new collection. Now, why am I showing you this? Because if we right click on the collection, we can now assign colours. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> now, on the grand scale of life, this might be nothing to some people, but to me, oh, it's so good. Can you imagine having a scene with over a thousand objects and collections, just having that visual representation of a colour? And if you've ever used Photoshop, you'll know how important this is. So being able to colour collections, ah, it's so good, it's just so good. So while I'm here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the objects, I'm going to add in a quick modifier, I'll add in something like a subdivision modifier, and let's just add a wireframe modifier on top. So why did I do this? Because if we actually drop this down in the outliner, we can now reorder the modifier in the outliner. Nice and basic, very simple stuff to be honest. So let's quickly add in a cube, just to give you another example here. What we can now do is we can take something like the wireframe modifier and we can drop this onto the cube in Outliner. Yes! Subtle touches like this just make Blender so much more intuitive and just make it easier to use for everybody. So this is a nice feature to be honest. Now what we also can do here is, let's say we have the object data. We can actually take the object data and create an instance. And that's one of the new features as well. Now, obviously, in terms of the UI improvements, there's a few tweaks, to be honest. And you have fuzzy search, which is pretty cool. It saves you going through all these tabs. If you just want to search for something like force, you'll see that it brings up the force field, so we can enable this. So another quick UI improvement. If I go to file, open to recent, hover over, you can now see it shows me the data path. It shows me when it was modified and also shows me this file size. Nice, subtle touches that just make Blender good. Now another thing here is, auto keyframing, we now have the menu at the right hand side. Now this has always been here, it's just been put in a much more convenient place. Now one thing I'm going to pick up on the modifiers, is I've actually deleted the apply button. And I think this is just to clean the UI up. I'm not entirely sure to be honest, but you obviously need to come to this drop down and hit apply. Or maybe it's just to force you to press control and A. Now, personally, I liked having the apply button, it just saves you a click, but anyway, no big deal, we can live with it. Now, in terms of new features, sculpting really needs its own video, and I genuinely mean this. Pablo and the team have been doing amazing work, amazing work, and you've now XYZ symmetry will now be a per mesh volume, which is nice. You can now lock and rotate the HDRI. You've got sculpt gestures. Obviously, you've got the new cloth sculpting, which is amazing. And you can see how much stuff there is, right? It's a shitload of stuff. New features. Check the documents out. Well worth it. In terms of modeling, you now have a new Boolean modifier. Correction. You now have an update to the Boolean modifier, and it now has an exact solver. So this should maybe correct some of the stupid errors that you used to get, hopefully. And there's a few other basic modeling features like the curves. So let's quickly just show you curves. So let's just quickly drop down a curve, for example. Let's move it to the right. Let's go into the options. Let's open up the geometry. Let's extrude this out. Let's give it a quick bevel. So one of the new things is we can now use the profile tool. So we can actually start curving stuff in. It's a bad example, but you'll get my point. And it also has kind of presets, so if we do something like cornice moulding, excellent. Check that bad boy out. So that's one of the new features regarding the curve and bevel profiles. Now there's a lot of stuff to cover here, so like I said, I'm not going to go through every single detail. So one of the things I'll pick up on, there's a couple of additions to physics, but in terms of animation, F curves have kind of had an improvement, so animation curves can now become much snappier, allowing for more sudden changes with fewer keyframes required, and that's that's a big one if you're an animator. All keyframe types can now be inserted without changing the F curve shape. This is quite a big deal to be honest. I know people might not see it that way, but if you drop like a keyframe in between, you can see here that it's kind of interpolating between, and you get this kind of strange kind of curve. So now when you do it, it's nice and smooth and everything's perfect. So what I'll do is I'll put the links to the release notes. 
check them out. They've already started in 2.92 and there's very nice features, to be honest. And obviously you have volume to mesh, mesh to volume. Oh, do me a favour, guys. Like your video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Twitter, support me in Gumroad. You know what to do. Take care.